All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the next HM Mentorship and Development live session. Uh, this is a, another round table where we have the command administrators for different platforms uh, and commands in regards to my Navy assignment. And uh, you know, this is beneficial to every sailor, both junior and senior, uh, to understand what it is that you need to put into your my Navy assignment um, for the commands to look at things for you. For example, your resume and things of that nature. So this is to give back to you all when you're making choices for your future because your orders have a big part to play into your future career development. I am Chief McCauley uh, and I am just the host for today as I have a list of presenters who are gonna talk to you uh, from different commands about what's important for you. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce our presenters and then we will get started going down the list. And at the end, if there are any questions from any sailors that are here, you're more than welcome to uh, ask, or you can even type it in the chat. And, um, and then this will be recorded and we will post it and you can ask questions at a later date as well. So today we have Master Chief Juarez from Cherry Point. We have Master Chief McDevitt, uh, submarines in Kings Bay. We have Senior Chief Peterson, 1st Mardiv. We have Senior Chief Dunginis, 4th Marines Reserve. We have Senior Chief Freeland, Fleet Surgical Team 8. We have Chief Jarrell, Walter Reed National Naval Medical Center. And we have HM1, Raquel, I think I said that right, I could be wrong, uh, representing SEALs and Expeditionary. All right, so as you can tell, we have a whole diversity team here, and this is going to be a lot of knowledge given tonight. So first, let me say thank you on behalf of all the presenters who took the time out of your busy schedule to give back to our junior sailors today. I know you could be doing anything from taking care of your families to staying safe from COVID and things of that nature, but you are here with us tonight to give back. So thank you so much. All right, so with that being said, we're gonna go down the list and we're gonna hear from our presenters tonight. Uh, first, let's, let's lead off with, uh, let's start with Senior Chief Peterson down in First Mardiv. All right, hey, good evening all, uh, or for me it's 0, 2.30 in the morning or so. So uh, good day to you all. So I just wanted to uh, take an opportunity here to uh, branch out to you all to inform you on some of the things that we are looking at at First Marine Division. Um, so basically real quick down and dirty, the, the composite, the makeup of our command and why this is so uh, important, my Navy assignments and what we need from you all to do as sailors. One, make our jobs easier, make you more competitive for the job that you want. So when the detailer is speaking on your behalf, we can take those um, your, from your resume, apply what you have in there with your preferences to our command comments. So the detailers can uh, have a better understanding what the command wants what the sailors want, and then they can articulate and uh, speak for you on the behalf of that billet that you may be fighting for, to applying for. So first off, our, our location, we're located in two different areas. We're located in 29 Palms. It's not as bad as everybody thinks it is, all right? It's not a bad spot out there with 7th Marine Regiment. They have a very uh, high uh, influx and increase um, in advancements out there at 29 Palms and plenty of opportunity uh, to deploy. Um, and then our second location is uh, Camp Pendleton. Where first, fifth, eleventh, and a lot of our separate uh, battalions are out of in Camp Pendleton, California. Our manpower: we have 1,241 enlisted billets across five UICs, and we sit somewhere right around 980 to about 1,020 billets filled. So when you start crunching the math, we're sitting at about 82 to 87 percent manned at all times. So it really is—it's uh, imperative on us at the command level to do our jobs and really scrub your guys' record because we're not manned to where we need to be. So we really need very, very, uh, let's say, uh, strong, high-powered, uh, motivated sailors to come to us because the workload, it's not 65 corpsmen anymore going out with a battalion. We're going out the door with 50. So we're doing a lot more with a lot less. So uh, we're looking for the best of the best that are applying to come to Blue Diamond First Marine Division. So our rates, we have RPs, PSs, HMs, and NDs. And then within the HM community, specifically what we'll be talking about today, uh, we have uh, obviously the Lima 03 Alphas, we have Lima 02 Alphas, 
uh, L10 alphas. We got your L24s, which is your BHTs, and the L12 alpha, your PMTs. So I'm going to start with the E4s and what we're looking at for E4s and below. So now with the new construct, the BSO-18, all the sailors are immediately going to shore duty, right? So you're no longer coming to sea duty right out the gate anymore out of course school. So what we're looking for in those E4s, we're looking at your PRT scores right out the gate. Why? You're coming to Camp Pendleton, you're coming to 29 Palms. The environment is very astir. You've got lots of mountainous uh, areas that you're going to be hiking up to uh, uh, 20 mile hikes um, for your McCree whenever you're doing that kind of stuff. So we need you, we are looking for excellent low and above. That's the first thing we look at is excellent low and above at First Marine Division. And then when we go from there, we're starting to look at your standard scores. Now that we can see your standard scores on the advancement exam, we want to see, because that is what we have is analytical data that the Navy uses for us to uh, grade your professional knowledge based off of a test. And that's all we can see on our end as the receiving command. So we can't see anything else that you do day to day work ethic wise, because we're not there with you. Um, we see your quals, obviously, we look at that kind of stuff. And then um, we do not see your evals. So this is where the resume comes in big time for the E4 and below, because your evals are only seen on my Navy assignments currently, um, if you're E5 and above, because it feeds through your PSR, uh, and through BOL, it feeds it in there, and then we can see your uh, performance mark average and your promotion recommendation. So we cannot see that for E4 and below. That's why the resume is really important. So what are we, what you ask, what are we looking for? So what we're looking for is we want you to brag about yourself. Take the opportunity to brag about yourself and what you did at your command. So what we look at for structure-wise, uh, go into your eval, take your last eval, literally look at it and type it right in there. If you want to type just the full eval, go for it. Um, if you feel like there's a lot of important stuff that maybe was not captured in your eval that was in your brag sheet, take that stuff off that Word document, copy, paste it right in there. Um, provide your ranking. If you had a ranking, a hard ranking or a soft ranking on your eval, number one of X, number two of X, because again, we can't see how many people were in your summary group. So explain that to us. Make yourself more competitive uh, and more sellable for the job. Give us those, those hard facts, those numbers. Um, Let's see, training. So lots of training, we see your ETJ now, your enlisted um, uh, training jacket. We see your college, we see your awards. But uh, if there's training that you did outside of what's being captured in your ETJ, document that there in that uh, assignment history in your resume portion there. Uh, give us that information. And then um, positions. So whatever positions you held, if you were the a senior uh, watch floor corpsman of a, a specific ward, put that title in there. And then bam, right out the bullet, right after the position that you held, and then give us the bullet. Um, hey, also, uh, everybody's family's dynamics are different. And we, we do see how many dependents you have on the sailor history. We can see uh, how many dependents you have if you're married, if you're divorced. We see all that stuff, right? Um, so if there's certain reasons why you're trying to get to California and you're trying to get the First Marine Division, if it's family related, if you scroll down to the bottom on my Navy assignments under your resume, there'll be a spot that says resume comments, right? Put the comments in there on why. I had a sailor uh, last cycle, just last week. We were looking at it. He was uh, married, had four kids, but he was geo batching. So he was trying to get back to, uh, by his own choice, he was trying to get back to California to be with his family where it was just more beneficial for him at the time to do a geo batch. So he was fighting to get back to California and he put that in the resume comments. So that was something that we could look at and consider as well, because we want to take care of the sailor and we want to take care of organization at the same time and have that balance. So put those kind of comments in there. Uh, if you see anything that, if you feel like something like, ah, you know what, this is a question that's not answered, go ahead and do that and we'll take a look at it. Um, so that's the E4, E5s. So number one, again, PRT right out the gate. So we're looking for that excellent low again and above coming to 1st Marine Division as an E5. And then we're going into your evals. Now we can see your evals inside my Navy assignments. So we're looking at your evals. We're looking at your performance mark average. And we're looking at your promotion recommendation. What I would offer to you is inside your uh, assignment of your history is where those evals were taking place at. Take the opportunity to put your, uh, your rank again. And then now post summary group RISCA. Take advantage of that PSG. We can't see that at our end. Feel free to throw that in there. Uh, put it in the um, inside the resume piece. We're also looking at time and service, time and grade. Why? So the reason why is higher tenure. We've had multiple, uh, we've been burned a few times for say where sailors have arrived to First Marine Division with like 16 to 18 months orders. And by the time you get done with a workup and you, we have you fully trained, 
And now if we don't catch that on our end, on our end, we may not even be able to deploy you. So now we can't employ you if we can't deploy you. So we do look at that. So if you're, uh, if you're coming up on higher tenure, time and service, stuff like that, take a look at um, possibly getting a higher, uh, higher tenure waiver and get that put into the system so we can see that while we're uh, applying, uh, picking you for the job. And then again, uh, standard score on your, uh, on your test, your advancement exam. We're looking for that. I'll tell you, there's, it's no secret. At First Marine Division, uh, we do have an algorithm for our map when it comes to advancement exams. So we're looking for that 50 and above on the average of your test scores. Um, and so we, we're looking at that as well. We want to see your test scores. And then, uh, hey, are you basic PME complete? We want to see your BPME done. You're an E5. You should have BPME done. And then when you get into the actual resume piece of it, and you're getting in there, again, brag about yourself. Number this, of number that, whether you're soft ranked, hard ranked, put that in there so we know. Um, highlight any deployment accomplishments that you may have had at previous commands. If you had spot, spot awards, put them in there. Tell us what you did, how you got that spot award. What was the accomplishment? What, did you, what was the impact to the mission? Uh, we like that stuff. Uh, again, training that's not in your ETAJ, uh, any qualifications that you have. Uh, if we don't see them in your uh, um, your quals page, add it. And again, position and then bullet. So resiliency. Resiliency is a big thing as a CNO tenant, um, initiatives and whatnot in there. So if you had a setback in your career, that's okay with us. We understand that. Things happen. I'll be the first person to tell you I've been DRB and NJP three times. All right. Resiliency is a beautiful thing. It's your best friend. So if you have a setback, if you were reduced in rank, Maybe you were in E6 and then you got reduced to E5, right? Show us that, that resiliency, that bounce back, because we're going to see that you were in E6, because especially if it was within the last five evals, we're going to see that. So don't leave that question unanswered. Go ahead, go in there in your resume about that, where that command was when you may have been reduced in rank or your setback was, and speak to it in, uh, in the resiliency that you have from that and in in how you bounce back. Uh, we look for those kind of things. And then I won't get too deep into the uh, JEA, SCPOA, all that jazz, but we are looking for that kind of stuff. Hey, any call outs, sailor of the quarter, sailor of the year. If you were that junior sailor of the quarter, junior sailor of the year, put that in your resume. Shout your, give yourself a kudos, give yourself a, a pat on the back there. All right, let us see that. And then TCCC, it's huge with us. Valkyrie, fresh whole blood. If you're a TCCC instructor, that's one less thing we got to do. Uh, we love, one less course we have to send you to, and it's not an easy course to get into. Um, so it is very difficult on the green side right now, the way TCCC.com is set up for us to get you that training. So if you already have it, you're just that much more, um, much more of a benefit to, to the rest of the division to be able to sell yourself and get the, the sailors trained up. And then lastly, I'll talk about the E6s. I'm not gonna jump into the chiefs and senior chiefs. If you have any questions about that kind of stuff, give me a call and we'll talk offline about what you should be putting in your resume. Um, but the E6s here, again, PRTs, uh, time and grade, years a service if you're coming up close to your retirement date and this might be your last tour you know and if it's a i i want to uh, i'm going to plan on retiring uh, out in california that's where i'm from that's where i want to retire you know tell us that stuff because we can see it hey this guy or this guy or gal is on their 18th 19th year and they're in e6 why they're coming trying to come to division um explain to, tell us why you want to come to division that late in your career um give us give us some feedback give us some information so we can, uh, we can understand that because again, right, we all have lives outside of the Navy um, and we wanna be able to put the best fit forward for the command, but also we wanna take care of the sailor ultimately at the end of the day. So we, 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 are, we are at Blue Diamond are here for you. Um, hey, are you PPME and SEJP complete? We look at those things. Um, I will tell you last, last cycle, we had one billet at First Marine Regiment and that was the only thing that was on my Navy assignments for E6s for us and there was 15 applicants. So um, I will tell you, if we are looking and we're scrubbing and we're getting down into the weeds with it, we will reach out to the sailor's command and we will ask the sailor, if the co sailor's command uh, to, hey, what's going on with this sailor? Uh, where they fit at here, fit at there. We're down, we got it down to a tie on where we want to rack and stack people. Help us help your sailor out kind of deal. We reach out, we talk. The names are there. So now we can see your command, we can see the names. So that gives the chiefs the opportunity to, uh, to talk you up as well. Um, Hey, if you're at instructor duty, we're you instructor of the quarter, instructor of the year. Put that stuff in there um, and amplify it. Don't leave these things blank. And I'll tell you, I'll leave you with this. Um, retired Master Chief Joseph Birds, he, he taught me one thing that was really, really, really important to me. He taught me a lot of things, but one thing that was really important to me and stuck out 
was, was this. If you have the opportunity to document, you take advantage of it. Any opportunity that you have to document something about your career, you take advantage of it and you put it in writing. And uh, so that's what we're looking for. And then I'll uh, make sure uh, Chief McCauley has my email already. If uh, you want to throw that in the post there, Chief McCauley, feel free and the sailors can reach out to me if they have any questions. And I'll also get them uh, set up with uh, Senior Chief Para, who is currently the 1st Marine Division SEL since I'm out here deployed and he'll be able to talk to him as well. And that's all I have. Wow. Uh, let me just say, I took notes of that. That, that was so much. I talk fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was some great information. I will make sure that your email gets in the comments. Senior, uh, CNC Power is actually uh, logged in. I see his name on here. Uh, welcome aboard, Senior Chief. And um, that was awesome. Okay, so let's move forward. Um, let's move to Master Chief Juarez, CMC Juarez, out at Cherry Point. Well, that's not really fair because uh, he covered everything. You know what I mean? So uh, it's going to be – look, Cherry Point is not a <laughs> – unfortunately, is not a uh, – a um, highly desired billet to come to. And, and, and we kind of understand that uh, because of our location. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, it's a, it's a great command that, that we're able to have. Um, but really, I just piggyback on what you said. You know, what I tell my sailors, because I get a lot of the new sailors uh, coming right out of core school and field med, um, is really market yourself. You, you gotta really think of it at, you know, that a resume is there for a reason. And so it's very, very important that you market yourself for your next job. Uh, and with that being said, you know, really, really, uh, PFAs, we all know, are, are, are a big part of, of that. Um, what we can see on the other end, as well as uh, any deficiencies with um, uh, record, uh, meaning any NJPs or anything like that, those get flagged. Um, so the resume is the only really part that you have an opportunity to really, really put your input in you know if you're a work center soup if you if you if you have some supply background um all those things are going to be key um if you've any accolades that you receive um you, you definitely got to put that in there because i'm going to tell you if i'm sending someone to first marine division i want them to know sick call and and that should be important so how much sick call time do you have um have you had an opportunity to work at either apu or uh which is the uh you know, ambulatory uh, patient unit there, there procedural unit. Um, you work in home port, you know, seeing sick call. What, what things are you going to be able to provide that gaining command is going to be huge. Um, and, and if you're leaving stuff out, um, that gaining command, that's all we can look at. And when I'm putting in input, you know, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm doing my diligence and looking through that stuff so that I give my commanding officer, my skipper, uh, the opportunity to have the best candidate available. Um, but really, you you know, covered everything. So uh, uh, thanks. And, uh, you know, any any questions that you have, though, absolutely uh, let us know, because on the other end, you know, we have to make decisions on, on information that's available. The less information available, uh, the, the opportunity for you to get selected for a know a great billet is going to be very very difficult and that's all i have awesome cmc thank you so much and you're right maybe i should have saved uh cng peterson for last i'll keep that in mind next time <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't have any say just to uh to say thank you uh, for a privilege and the opportunity it's uh definitely great uh to hear and see uh subject matter experts uh, institutional technical experts such as uh uh, Mass Chief uh, Juarez and Senior Chief Peterson, and uh, thank you, uh, Chief uh, McCauley, for putting this together. Really, uh, this is what we need. This, this is what our sailors need. This is how our leaders actually need, because we need to maximize our institutional mindset, uh, because we often uh, uh, go straight into, into our technical fields, and we forget that the Navy promotes leaders. And for that, you need to maximize your institutional acumen. Um, so I appreciate uh, uh, everything uh, you guys have do. I've learned a lot every day from uh, uh, Senior Peterson, and I've known uh, Master Forrest. Uh, this is the reason why we have leaders like him uh, elsewhere at Cherry Point. So I appreciate you uh, uh, chiming in. 
Absolutely. Always representing IDCs, right? Still in IDC, still. Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. but, but thanks again. Uh, really, I don't have uh, anything else to add because I know uh, uh, everything has been said. Uh, yes, uh, just to uh, uh, recap, uh, everything is like we, we are in a, in, a, in a business organization uh, and to stay marketable, uh, often sailors actually don't like to be compared or, or, or be uh, seen or uh, spoken about like, hey, this is your competition. So those words sometimes are not welcomed uh, by some of the sailors. So what I would like to say about that is just that people, uh, sailors in this case, uh, they need to take it with a grain of salt because it's a healthy comparison. And the only thing that puts in perspective is if other sailors are capable of completing not just your M&A assignments or your resume, but also all the other opportunities that laid on the table in front of us is by choice that they choose to uh, to. Uh oh. Their life, okay. and uh, so that healthy comparison that I was speaking of, especially what it means is that if the sailor next to me is capable, so I am, or so am I, uh, in this case. So. We have to make that choice as an individual. We have to take ownership of our future. Thanks again. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that, 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 those awesome words, Senior Chief Parr. All right, let's move to a different platform. Let's move uh, to Master Chief McDevitt down in submarines. Hey. Uh so everybody said everything. Um, but I also feel like I've learned so much, uh, you know, talking about the email, uh, breakouts and, you know, soft and hard uh, rankings and things like that to, to put in my resume on M&A. &A. Um, I know I'm personally thinking about that myself. So that's... Uh, that's a Ma great Chief, Master Chief, I think, Master Chief, um, I think you might be, I think your phone uh, might be going I, in and out. really awesome to learn and to, uh, yes. I think your phone is kind of going in and out. If you just, just, if you could rewind just maybe about a minute of what you were saying, or not a minute, but maybe a few, sec few seconds of what you were saying. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. I think you, you, you it sounds like you're okay. probably, go ahead, we're listening. Yeah, I'm I'm in the boonies. You got to remember, I'm in the Kings Bay. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So like I was saying, I'm I'm just I, I'm here to uh, answer any questions. I'm also here to learn. I've learned a lot tonight just listening to everybody else talk, and I feel like everyone else has said uh, pretty much everything that uh, I would have said. Okay. Awesome. And all you junior sailors out there, I want you to. I hope you took note of what she. That is a master chief that said she's still learning. So do understand that we still learn at our levels. You never stop learning. You never stop growing. All right, junior sailors, understand that. We are here to learn along with you. We're in this together. All right, awesome. Hey, well, one other thing I'd like to put out there, Matt, Mac, is, um, you know, uh, it, it's, we're all learning today, um, but it's also the, the people on the other end who, um, who are going to go review all this stuff. Uh, if they take the time and the diligence, they're going to be able to select the best people. And sometimes it is work and, and, and it, you're going to have to spend, a, you know, some extra minutes, extra time looking through those candidates. But you have to understand that you are doing what's best for your your clinic, your organization. And if you don't take a active um, role in that, you know, then you are going to get the less desirable candidates or those who are only going to be at your command for you know, 14 months, and then they get higher tenured or whatever. So if you want to have the best, you know, quality sailors, um, now, now granted, as a, as, a, as a master chief or a senior chief or a chief, you know, the mess is, we don't care what sailors we get somewhat, um, because we own them all, and we have to take care of them all. But if you can get some, you know, if you can stack your deck, why not? Absolutely. And, and, and it's crazy, because as I'm listening to you all talk, I'm actually thinking about my job and my role as an officer recruiter when I deal with civilians. I'm looking at resumes every day, trying to figure out who am I going to send to a board to bring in the, the future, you know, doctors and nurses. So it, this is amazing. All right. 
let's um let's move to uh let's move to Chief Jarrell up at Walter Reed National Naval Medical Center. Hi, good uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so again, I think uh, most of the information has been stated already as far as uh, what we're looking for. I will just touch on, um, of course, what we do here at the medicine. Um, we don't necessarily dig too deep into the, uh, I would say probably E4, E5 and below. We do look at some E5s and E6s, um, definitely when it comes to our technicians, uh, simply because we want to make sure that in those leadership positions, we are getting uh, personnel with experience that's had some leadership under their belt. Um, what have they done at their previous command? Uh, we look to see if they're doing back-to-back -back shore duty. Uh, if they're coming from the fleet, um, what kind of knowledge could they bring back um, to Walter Reed? Uh, with us being the, the stand-up of the Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Commands, a lot of the times it's, it's very beneficial to get um, sailors who are either coming from Greenside or from the ships that have had shipboard or deployment experience because we do get a lot of um, sailors that are right out of school. So coming here with that knowledge and that leadership to be able to give them some advice and guidance on what's it like once they actually leave here. Um, because of course in the medicine, it's, not, it's nothing like being um, out in the actual fleet. Uh, because you don't have the same type of relationships with the personnel and stuff that are around you. Um, so we do look for personnel who have strong, who have demonstrated uh, strong leadership capabilities out in the fleet um, to bring that back to kind of help mentor and guide our junior sailors. Um, and that's pretty much about it. Besides the things that were already mentioned, that's kind of what we look for here. Uh, we do, if we do have um, billets for a first class um, and we have you know you say the one up one down you hear that a lot but if it's a first class billet we do look at the first classes first we don't single out the second classes um, but we do look at the first classes first because we want to be sure that we have the right um, leadership in the right areas um, especially in our um, clinical areas that's all awesome awesome thank you so much thank you so much good information Okay, let's move to uh, let's move to H and one Raquel representing the SEALs Expeditionary. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so um, for NSW itself, yes, we look at the PRTs. We are looking for we do have other billets out there uh, for like PSs, YN, CBs. We're really CB heavy, but specifically for the HMs coming into NSW it's IDC and E6 heavy. We currently have zero E4 and below billets. We are trying to work on that. Um, we do have some applicants here and there, but like Chief just said, we do look at the pay grade specific first to see if we can pull from there. We have one physical therapy tech and one behavioral health tech. Um, and then for the PRTs itself, it depending on if you're going to say group versus log to or to a SEAL team, depends on your PRT. For going to the SEAL team, you must be an excellent high or outstanding only on your last three PRTs. So you can't have a single dip or they will not accept you in. Um, we are a high priority billet. So one thing to keep in mind is if you are planning on submitting for an officer package, we tend to re request that that is later in your tour to make sure that you are filling your need as an IDC or an 8404, whatever your billet is going to be prior to submitting your officer package overall. For the courses that, like Senior Peterson was saying, TCCC is really heavy for us. Uh, the Valkyrie, if you can get into the Valkyrie instructor, that'd be a great benefit as well. And then just making sure that everyone is like motivated. Self-learning is very independent. So you are in austere, crazy locations by yourself. Just making sure that you are on top of everything personally and for your career. And that's all I have. Awesome. Great stuff, HM1. That is that is good information. Um, I really like the fact that you cover about it being a high priority billet. So if my if my goal is to, like you said, put in an officer package. 
then I might want to stay clear of NSW. If, if I want to submit right away, I might want to look at going somewhere else and not coming to NSW because that is a high priority billet and chances of you get, you know, doing that there are not very high. So that, that was great information to, uh, to put out. Thank you so much. Um, all right, let's move to, let's move to Senior Chief Don Guinness with 4th Marines and Reserve. So good uh, evening, everyone. So Senior Chief Don Guinness here. So I'm, um, I'm currently stationed at uh, Fort Marine Logistics Group out in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. But um, uh, what I'm going to talk about, uh, since uh, Tom already discussed a lot of stuff, uh, Senior Chief Peterson, um, coming from an overseas command. So I was the um, uh, Human Resource Department uh, LCPO and patient admin, uh, patient admin um, LCPO as well. But uh, during our during my tenure back in Naval Hospital Guam, um, we started with the CMSI DBBD before before it becomes uh, my Navy assignment. And uh, this is the thing that we actually look for. Uh, besides from HYT, uh, PRT, um, we we don't we don't really accept uh, we don't really uh, pick sailors who's actually uh, in the probationary or even good though. It is just because the island food is really good, and. Um, we, we, we already expect that that's going to that's, that's gonna contribute to a PFA pillar. This is when a PFA, two strikes in a row, two strikes, you're out, right? So PRT is the biggest thing for overseas command. Um, another thing is the EFMP, right? So your EFMP, if it is not updated, uh, we look that um, if you're category two, category three, uh, depending on uh, the command, if we're able to accommodate your um, uh, your needs and your children's needs. Um, we need to make sure that sailors are updating their EFMP category because if you are category three or category four, uh, most likely we will not um, recommend you to come to Naval Hospital Guam. It is just that because um, our next um, uh, echelon of care is a tripler medical center down in Hawaii. And if the command is uh, accepting that, because Guam is not the only command in Guam, or Naval Hospital Guam is not the only Guam, uh, command in Guam, we have subordinate command within the region. And if the command accept you there, um, regardless you're a PS, an LS, or whatever, um, the command will um, have to fly you maybe once a, uh, once a year or twice a year to go to Tripler, and it will cost you or your command a lot of money. So that's why EFMB is the biggest thing for us when we look for sailors applying for this one, right? Uh, see in a short rotation. So if you're coming back to back uh, shore overseas command, we will not accept you. If you're coming from a um, uh, shore command, CONUS command, we will not accept you. So we will accept C, uh, C command. So coming from a seashore, a C command. So FMF, a green side, a shipboard, or special duty assignment instructor or RDCs, right? So we will definitely accept you. Okay, so um, NECs, right? Talk about NECs. Uh, some NEC, and this is where the resume is gonna come in. I'm gonna echo what uh, Senior Chief Peterson is um, uh, elaborated earlier that NEC sometimes doesn't reflect on time in fleet thems or in your PSR. And the reason why is this. So if you have a CPPA NEC, you have the safety NEC, uh, sometimes it gets stuck in some kind of a system, right? So we wanna, we wanna see that articulated in your resume that you earn a safety NEC, uh, CPPA NEC, uh, operational support uh, uh, officer NEC, it is just because um, it will help us uh, to, determine, to determine or make that decision that, okay, so if you have an HM2 who has this NEC and we know that we're hurting HM2 admin person, we might uh, rank you number one out of five applicants because of member receive an NEC. So articulate that on your resume, on the comment section that you earned this NEC, CPPA, or whatever is NEC, because it will help you buy for that uh, billet. Um, another thing that I, uh, we, we, we are hurting in overseas command is the specialty training. What are those specialty training? So TCCC instructor or CLS instructor. Um, we barely see sailors coming from green side or blue side uh, who has these qualifications. 
Um, and we all know that, you know, Bumed, Navy Medicine imposed this uh, instruction saying that we have to train our sailors every three years to be a TCCC qualified provider course. And without uh, the TCCC instructors or CLS instructors, uh, we cannot uh, do that. What end up happening is that we are sending sailors back to CONUS to be trained as a TCCC instructor, which costs us a lot of money. So what we do is that um, we actually see, hey, if the member is coming from a green side command, we assume back in, my, back in the day when CMSID is still there, uh, we assume that um, this member actually is a TCCC instructor. But with the My Navy assignment now, uh, you could put that and articulate that in your resume. You are TCCC instructor qualified and when you get that or when you have it, right? Um, besides from TCCC instructor, going overseas, we are also hurting EMTs. This is now going to Navy Cool US MAP certifications, right? So if you earn an EMT because you challenge and you certify it through Navy Cool and you earn a US MAP, your EMT basic um, um, qualified, we want to see that in there. We don't have any NECs that to prove that you have EMTs, right? So put that on your resume saying that you are EMT, B, EMTI, paramedic, whatever. So in that way we can see, hey, how can we fit you and how can we rank you? Another thing that we look for in overseas command is the EVOC course, Emergency Vehicle Operator course or um, um, course certified. Because even though you're an EMT, if you can, if you have an EVOC qualification, uh, qualification, we can still put you in to drive those uh, ambulances overseas. So that's another thing, right? Um, for the chiefs out there, so chiefs out there, right? Um, ELD, Enlisted Leader Development Facilitator. It's not an NEC, but if you are applying for a chief's billet, a senior chief master chief billet, right? If you're ELD facilitator, okay, we want to put that on the resume as well on the bottom that you are ELD trained for 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 the Navy, for the for, for NLEC. We want to see that. Um, I'm going to top it up with civilian certifications. So overseas command going to a hospital command overseas, we do really hurt on um, nursing care. Even though we did teach this in core school or you get this from um, another command, but if you are qualified civilian, uh, civilian qualified LBN, LPN, CNA, we want to see that in there because it will tell us a lot. Okay, so civilian certification plays a lot as well. So um, this is what we look when sailors apply for overseas command. So I uh, hope this information, especially the sailors coming try, trying to apply for um, overseas command, took this notes. And I know you guys are gonna continue doing this. So um, that's all I got. Uh, pending any questions, I'll be standing by. Wow. All I can say is, wow, that was amazing. You covered a lot of, uh, a lot of information. Before we move to our last presenter, uh, I wanna tell you that I've been taking notes on everything that all of y'all have been saying. And one thing that I know I can hit on big time for our junior sailors is that PRT. All of y'all have said PRT numerous times. And, 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 you know, I know, I know you guys hear it too. You hear so many sailors say, well, well, the PRT doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't count for too much. Well, yeah, absolutely it does. So we will definitely, uh, I would definitely piggyback on that big time with junior sailors as far as the PRT goes. Thank you again, Senior Chief Don Guinness for that. And, and please stand by because there probably will be more questions. All right, let's move forward to uh, Senior Chief Freeland out at Fleet Surgical Team 8. Good evening, everybody. Um, so, most people don't know what a fleet surgical team does, but essentially we are a, a surgical asset that can jump on in the ships and actually do surgery in the ships. We generally um, help out with DISCA responses or anything else that's needed for uh, deployments. Um, so when I'm looking at my new assignments or when CMS ID, uh, BBD when I was at the SEL down in Key West is NEC is the top thing I look for because it's, especially when you're at a uh, MTF, it's harder to send people TAD to go to career council school to do the CPPA training or safety uh, and instructor duty. So the NECs are what I look at first, because I, I, on my team, I have 21 people and we have a, a, an ISIC, which is a fib, uh, Fibron and amphibious squadron, but we do all of our collateral duties. So if you already have that collateral, it saves so much stress. So I'm looking for people who already have the instructor NEC or any sort of instructor, because we actually go to the ships and teach them uh, classes. Um, 
for the CPPA, like I ha we do our own administrative work. So if somebody already has that, I don't have to lose it for a couple, you know, two weeks to a month for the classes and actually like hands-on training. Um, and for career counselor, obviously that, that's a, that, the most critical of NEC, I believe, you know, as a career counselor myself. Um, but you're affecting so much stuff. So the NEC is the first thing I'll look at when I'm looking at someone's resume. Next thing I'm looking at is your assignment history. So obviously if I'm going to show or see like you need coming from the opposite because you got to keep up your rotation. Um, but as senior chief Peterson and senior chief Dunn has pointed out is when you look at your assignment history, you can put all the information you did while you were there at that command. So it might have not fit in your eval. You might've done something that didn't fit or, you know, you could put your SOQ right up. If you got SOQ, put those accomplishments in there. Um, so it shows that, you know, you were doing great things at your last commands and, you know, just you updating your resume shows that you care about your future. I'm not saying you don't now, but it's, it shows you care. Like, okay, here's what all the things I did. I accomplished this while I was there. Boom. And like uh, Matchy Paris said, it's keeps it uh, competitive. Like it's, it's a fresh and it's good competitiveness. It's not cutthroat. It's like, hey, I'm selling a product. I want somebody to buy it. So I'm going to tell you how great I am. That's what you should all be doing. It's marketability because that matters now while you're in the Navy and once you uh, get out and transition to the civilian realm. Um, going down is making sure your warfare devices are up to date. So that's another good thing is just to look at your resume just to make sure your information is up to date. You literally will go through, it'll tell you security clearance, your warfare devices. I'm actually looking at mine right now. Um, showing your NECs that are not in your record, make sure they're put in your record, get with your CPPA or your PSD, a flow or PSD. Um, PRTs, obviously that's a given. Um, most people covered a lot, but that's a, an important thing. So covering that. Um, we get to see if you're married or you're single, so that helps us as well. So when we're signing sponsors, um, when we go into your ETJ, you know, my big thing is everybody needs to do PMK. I know everybody wants to do college and get degrees and all that, but my belief is you, you need to learn the Navy first. Doing your PMEs, important. You do both of them, like getting your PMKs done, your uh, JPME, your SEJPME, getting those done so you understand what the rest of the Navy does on top of what you do. So if you go to a different platform, you know, hey, like I remember from my courses, uh, what surface Navy does, what does submarines do? What do the aviation units do? So it kind of helps you out. And then just um, that bottom part, that resume comments. I mean, it's just like your brag sheet, if there's something that does not covered in any sections, put it in there. Um, no matter if it's uh, hey, like outside the box awards, like I have awards that are not in, they can't put them in fleet Tim. So it was the NAACP inspirational leadership award. I put that in my resume comments because it doesn't fit anywhere else. But make sure those outside the box things or certain you know local awards, if it's Navy League, those things are put in there because um, that's very important. Um, seeing that you have you know outside the box items that you know, and you actually took the time to put them in there. But the biggest thing is you know you're selling this big. This thing is literally you're selling yourself. It's a product, and you want people to buy it. And then the best way to get someone to buy it is give them more information. You want us all to know what what's going on. Um, as and again, everybody's already said is. Make sure there's an, a, you know, something going on in your life. Uh, you're trying to get back, you're geobatching, uh, have a marital problem, whatever the issue may be, is put it in the comments and make sure you know, it's, it's known, it's out there and everybody can read up on it. So, but I would literally suggest anytime you've got a, an accomplishment, go in there and make sure your record's up to date. This is perfect for you to check your resume and you might like, oh, I can make it look better and just keep you know, fine, fine tuning it. So, I mean, it's your resume and your future. So you want to look the best you can look. And I would advise as well is if you want to have somebody look at it, take a look at it as well. Like one of your peers or one of your uh, mentors or leadership while you're working on it, get feedback on it. So that's all I have. Everything pretty much been covered. Awesome. All right. Um, well, I did see, before we get to questions, I did see two of two more of our presenters uh, that came on board that I, I have as well. Um, I want to introduce uh, Senior Chief Jordan. Uh, he could give information on behalf of uh, the fleet side, the carrier, CVN, as he came from the bush. He's now at the NMRTC, and he was a prior uh, detailer. So without further ado, I'll, I'll give the floor to Senior Chief Jordan. Hey, can everybody hear me? I was kind of having a couple of um, issues before I logged on. Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Hey, so, um, hey, thanks. Um, first, thank you for allowing me to come on and speak. And um, I've been hearing a lot of different information from a couple of different platforms. Um, like you said, I am at NMRTC, NMRTC Portsmouth, which just came from the George H.W. Bush. 
Um, a lot of the information, um, I would probably echo HU1 that's coming from Walter Reed in regards to what we're looking for. Um, I think for the NMRTCs, the biggest thing we're probably looking for, regardless of NECs, regardless of, it, of um, skill set or specialties, is I think we're just looking for people who actually have the, the energy to continue on. And what I mean by continue on is actually knowing that, hey, I'm going to the sure command and I'm going to the sure command um, not to kind of um, just kind of get into the thick of things in regards to not just doing anything and just kind of getting complacent because you're going to a sure command, which is typically it, it's pretty common. I'm not saying that everybody involves themselves in that type of behavior, but that's normally kind of what you get. Um, but if you really think about the NMRTCs with the fact that we have the largest accession population in any command uh, next to like FMF units and things like that, um, we, we definitely got to have leaders who truly have the energy to lead these sailors, develop them and get them ready to go out to, to fully commands and things like that. Um, coming from the carrier, I can tell you um, the biggest things we look for is we look for the sailors who are truly motivated um, to actually go out there and want to do true operational, operational, um, have a true operational experience. Um, I say that because when you typically get sailors from the fleet that come out to the carriers or they come out to ships and things like that, um, sometimes you get people with energy, sometimes you don't. Um, one of the biggest things that we do like to focus on also is the fact that um, you can run the PRT. I think that's been going around the room because a lot of the times you just really don't have the time to um, stay physically fit like you would be with the FMF and things like that. So typically sailors tend to drop off when they come to the carrier. You tend to find a lot of um, BCA failures and things like that. So um, that's something. Um, as far as prior detailing, so... Um, I know the process changes. Detailing changes like almost every week, every month, every day, every 24 hours, every whatever the case you want to call it. Um, being a prior detailer, one of the things that we would look at in regards to different platforms is going back to the carriers, PRTs. We focus on PRTs huge. Um, going with the FMF, most of the time, if you really can't PR, you, if you really can't stay physically fit, we're probably going to send you to the FMF because we have that expectation that you're going to go there and you're going to kind of be forced into that environment. So it's going to help you build that resilience that you need. And just overall being, being open and mindful to what's out there not actually staying in one location, being able to go from Cali to Virginia, from Virginia to Florida and things like that. So um, I really don't have too much because I've pretty much heard a lot from everybody else. Um, but that's pretty much all I've got. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for that, that uh, wisdom from all different uh, platforms, uh, seeing Chief Jordan. And I know we also have Master Chief Washington, that's on board and I, I, you know, everything may be covered too, but I got to give the floor to you just in case you have something you want to add, Master Chief. Too easy if I can figure out how not to, uh, how to unmute. <laughs> uh, so to meet the Lakeisha Washington, um, my, my, my career path is, is much like Ray's, you know, I did uh, FDNF hospital, LSD, um, Carrier, PERS, um, and, and now I'm at uh, NMRTC Portsmouth uh, with, with Ray. Uh, so I, I, please forgive me if I, I hit anything that's already uh, been hit, but from the large MTF side, the, the one thing, you know, I think um, we have to think about and, and remind our sailors, even when they're applying for these short duty jobs is, you know, at the major MTFs now with the DHA transition and us turn, uh, going into NMRTC, uh, shore duty as we know it really does not exist. Um, so we're going to this sole source uh, platform. So essentially we'll have about four major platforms. Um, we're working on getting them uh, coded type two. And again, please forgive me if I, I don't mean to insult your intelligence or um, if you know this stuff, but those sole source platforms, we're essentially going to four platforms that'll be a type two duty. 
So one of the things, you know, we, we talk, we've been talking Corman a lot, but at these major MTS, we have CSs, we have NCs, we have RSs, we have LSs, we have YNs, we have PSs. And, you know, our, those sailors, um, our sailors do not realize that they are not coming to shore duty as they know it. Um, so you get a CS, a five-year sea tour that goes to a major MTF that, that, that has been out on the comfort three times since they checked in on, on shore duty. And those things really wear on the sailors. So when they're doing um, their, their resumes, when they're doing their applications, um, those e EFMs, uh, dual military, all those things really matter. Now, you know, large MTFs, we're probably still going to absorb uh, those type of things or those sailors aren't going to have much of a choice. But I think, you know, the education piece is big because we're, we're losing, um, they're, they're just losing confidence in the Navy and, and in the system. Uh, knowing. And it's, it's a lot of our corpsmen too, uh, that, you know, I, I'm ready to go on my shore duty. You know, I'm an I'm a E5, I've been, been in it 12 years. I'm ready to start, start a family. I'm ready to have babies. This is my shore duty. And it's uh, skirt, no shipmate, this, uh, you're going out on EMF Juliet, that, that's your platform. So I think that's one of the um, big things for us to remember. Um, and I, you know, I hear we, we still, you know, do our fleet temps things and use fleet temps, but, you know, just as a culture, we really have to use billet based distribution. Um, I was a placement coordinator um, before I went to the, the Gerald R. Ford and billet based distribution is real time. I heard uh, somebody say they lost that, the they can't see those NECs or, or the lag time for the NECs but if you're using your BBD and looking at the the fit to fill and looking at those NECs and in inventory it's a real time snapshot when you talk about your TGs your PGs um, your alignments and your fit to fill uh, one of the biggest things um, for and stop me if you have any questions I'll, I'll just keep going anybody knows me know I, I could talk too uh, but well, we just were looking at our, our uh, NCs. So Portsmouth is uh, a, a large MTF. Um, it's kind of been underserved for quite quite some time. It's just big and uh, overwhelming. So that large MTF, 3,000 sailors there, 6,000 staff overall on that campus. Uh, we had no Navy uh, counselor, zero, va vacant. Uh, so we've really been um, beat, beating it up. So one of the things, uh, we had four applicants this cycle. We fin finally uh, rattled some, enough feathers at PERS for them to get us prioritized and get us advertised for our NCC. Uh, we were willing to take a pace up in the billet and, and try to grow an NC. So um, we, we finally got that NC billet advertised. We get four applicants. So uh, Ozzy, uh, I, uh, James Osborne, our NCCS, Bumet, uh, NCS, and um, NCCS, and NAVMED East, well, NMFL, the artist formerly known as NAVMED East, you know, he went in there and, you know, with career counselor eyes, because we know as corpsmen, we can collateral duty a lot of stuff, and some of these roles just really need to be the subject matter experts. When you talk about your LNs, your YNs, your PSs, your NCs, so he went in and he took those those four candidates and you know he he looked at the ones that had comparable platforms. So our our number one choice for the NC billet was the guy who had a carrier experience, you know, and a carrier is not not nearly as big as the MTF or not nearly as big as a complex. So he went for the guy with the carrier experience, you know, good PRTs, um uh good evals of, of course and just pick the the best of the best now the filter through those candidates had we not ranked those candidates we we could have got either one of them because we just needed a, a nc but had we not went in there and went in those records you have you know another nc that's uh, she's straight up in, in her resume and everything that this is my last tour i'm just looking for some shore duty to ride it out so obviously with a program that's had a vacant billet for for two to three years um she's probably not the best candidate um but i, I just want to toot the horn on, on you know those other things we need um at at these at these commands one of one of the things i experienced on the ford too was you know now in the ford class carrier your supply billet are, are billeted to you. So on a four class carrier, you had a billeted LS. So our operational folks, you know how difficult AMOLs, ADOLs, uh, demos and supply system is. Who better to do supply than a logistics specialist? 
Um, so if one of the things I fought in the medical department um, on the fort was, hey, I have a LS that's BSC to me. Supply, <laughs> let me get my skill set um, so that I could have um, the SME run, run my programs. Um, but again, I, I, could, I could keep going. I'll, I'll go offline. Um, a lot of stuff happening at the at the MTFs, you know, it, you could you can make money out out here right now. You know, it it, it shouldn't be a curricular. You know, we probably got to do better with recognizing the performance. Um, but it, it's not it's not necessarily traditional shore duty anymore. Um, even for the operation of bubbles on the phone that's been running from Navy Medicine, um, you can you can earn some leadership stripes um, and you can earn earn your salt there too, because um, we are doing a lot more readiness stuff with the NMRTC. Um, and, the, and the new directorates. But barring any questions, um, that's all I have. I'm sorry I didn't have a script. So um, if it felt like I was just rambling, I was just trying to give you as much as I can, as quick as I can. Rock too easy. Rock. And Mashi Watson, we, we, we don't want no script. What you did was amazing. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I can tell you that I definitely didn't know that the, the tempo at MTFs uh, have changed. I have been on board with what's going on with DHA, but I didn't know that the temple has changed like that, uh, you know, sending, sending so many sailors out to different platforms. So that is awesome. Uh, great gouge. I do know that uh, Senior Chief Jordan wanted to come back in one more time to speak on fleet tips. And then after that, we'll take any questions from any sailors that are on, that are on and then we'll get ready to close out. Senior Chief Jordan. Hey, thanks for bringing me back. Hey, Master Chief, um, I really appreciate you putting the information out on fleet temps. So, when you really look at fleet temps, Master Chief is right. It's really not like a real time. It doesn't really provide the most accurate real time. Let me um let me correct myself. And the reason I say that is because if you, if you think about it in the past, right? So a dental tech, dental tech E5, right? That dental tech picks up E6, that E6, and that NEC drops off, right? Or say for instance, um, surgical tech picks up Chief, and that NEC drops off, right? So you know what you used to get? You used to get people that were fleet temps those sailors on board ships or wherever the case may be and they didn't realize that you know this person's NEC might have dropped off or something might have changed in the system and then what they would do is they'll call the detail and be like hey you know I see this quad zero chief that's sitting on board this ship and you know I'm trying to line myself up with him or her to get on board this this aircraft carrier and they didn't understand that that person was an x-ray tech or a surgical tech in the past and that when they got selected for chief, that NEC dropped off and now they're reflecting as a quad zero um, general duty corpsman. So um, the fleet temps thing, I would definitely say, I wouldn't say don't use it, but I would be mindful to back that information up with BBD because she's right. BBD is going to give you real-time information in regards to exactly what's going on with the individual that's in route to your command or at the command that you're trying to go to. Um, also, when it comes to those other different rates, the CSs, the RSs, the, the YNs and things like that, I would say be mindful of those rates and understand them. Um, the reason I say this is because a good portion of our sailors will not have the experience of dealing with other rates unless they either, one, go to a command where – there are other rates um, or go to a ship or go to someplace else where it's really fleet concentrated. And then when those sailors get to those commands, as in those RSs or those YNs or those RPs, or whatever the case may be, um, we tend to kind of um, have a really big disconnect on them because we truly don't understand the amount of wealth that they can give us. Um, Master Chief is right. I mean, we tend to have a lot of corpsmen that are in positions to where we have those rates out in the fleet that can come in and do those things. So um, I would say um, from a BBD standpoint or a managed standpoint, those are some of the things that you should be looking at. Those are some of the things that, um, you know, we should be able to have conversations with our leadership and just say, hey, you know, I get it. It's easy for us to put HM so-and-so here, but have we ever thought about looking at a PS? Have we ever thought about looking at a YN or something like that to, to do the job that they're actually being paid to do in the Navy? So that's just some information, thanks. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Senior Chief Jordan. All right, with that being said, uh, I know there are a few <laughs> sailors that are on board. For any sailors that are not presenters that are here right now, if you have any questions, you can either type it in the chat or you're more than welcome to come off mute and ask your question. 
the floor is yours if you have a question. I'll stand by. I have a question, Chief. Uh, HM2 Nally here. I'm um, at NTAG, Ohio River Valley, doing recruiting duty right now. Um, my question is, because I've been have I spoke with you, uh, I think it was last week, um, I had Facebook message you about trying to go sub by DC. Um, but my, my question is, because I've been to, I was actually stationed with Senior Chief Dengenis out in Guam um, at my previous command. And before that, I was at Portsmouth. Uh, my question is because I really had a, a tough time on trying to pick what orders I want to go to next. Um, and that was kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to do sub IDC. It's very challenging. Um, I mean, I have no warfare devices. I've been in two hospitals. Um, now I'm at this, you know, out of rate command. Um, what advice would um, someone, chief and above, give me for longevity in the Navy when it comes to my commands for the future? Because I know normally a lot of times it's kind of, look down upon at two back-to-back -back hospitals or short commands. Um, so I'm really just trying to figure out, I'm 16 months from, or 18 months from my PRD, and I'm really just struggling on what type of command I should go to next. Great question. I'm going to leave the floor to any of you that would like to answer that question. Oh, I, I would love to. Um, and, and more so because I set the selection board, the chief selection board last year. Um, and I don't know if I have any fellow board members or recorders in the room. Uh, but one of the things we, we, we got to stop doing um, and, and uh, we, we have to start teaching our sailors on these CDTs and I'm, I'm talking to you uh, directly, uh, HM2, is, you know, the, the, we, we teach the five C's and we teach how we made it and how we got the chief or whatever. Um, when, you, when you get to a selection board, there, there's two documents that are, are briefs and constantly, constantly, constantly reiterated the whole selection board. And those are the precepts and your ladder, your enlisted career path. So you may have just sent out a, uh, a call, uh, a request on Don Tracker for us to put in input on the, that ladder. And if we're frustrated about promotions and how people are promoting and we, we did not get in there and add that input on the, on the ladder, then we're gonna get what we, we got. Uh, so HM2, I, I would, you know, really charge you to take a look at your enlisted career path, um, see where what you have not gotten uh, or what, what you haven't hit. And everybody gonna tell you, go to C, go to C, go to C. Um, uh, and we are overall as a rating, we know we got some very operationally centric NECs. We have 40 closed loop NECs, essentially 40 ratings within one. So overall, we are a shore centric uh, NEC. I mean, a short center grading with some very operationally intense NECs. Um, so you have to hit those things that fit your career paths or those milestones um, you haven't hit. So, you know, okay, see, we, we can't get you to see. However, we're struggling for SARP counselors. Um, however, we're struggling for, for IDCs. You say you want to be a sub IDC, you know, and overall, our whole intent is to take you know, our quasi zero sailors or our sailors in um, journeymen, uh, our, our apprentice level NECs, the lower level E1 through E5 NECs, and we want to encourage them to go to the senior and these mastery NECs. So, you know, HM2, the Navy wants you to go from your quasi zero now. I am, Keith. I'm sorry? I am, I am currently quasi zero, yes. All right, so the Navy wants you to go from the, the, the quasi-zero NEC to a mastery level NEC. So we don't, we don't need you as an X-ray tech. We don't need you as a surge tech. We'll take you as a BHC because we're just hurting from those. But, you know, the, the strong look for you is to go into those mastery level um, NECs and move from there. Now, you're talking to a quasi-zero HM that, that made master chief really fast, made senior chief really fast, made... made Chief really fast, but I'm going to tell you that I'm probably an, an anomaly. I told you I got, I'm quad zero. I got two ships off under my belt. I got a Marine Corps tour under my belt. I got an FDNF tour under my belt. I am the anomaly. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, the norm. So take a look at your career path. Um, see which milestones you have to hit. A lot of times people want to just location detail. The location is not going to get you what you need in your record. Uh, to be competitive. So I, I can't stress enough. Take a look at your ladder. 
take a look at those precepts. You know, I'm not sure where you want to go if you if you want to be a chief, but just think about it. Our, our force master chief and the force master chief and before then, they put out those ladders and they told us exactly how to get from E1 through E9 in our, our, our rating. Um, and, and that's the biggest piece of advice I'll get you. I'm not going to say do it my way or this is what I did or this is what you have to do. And I, I'm telling you, this is as fresh as I can give you, um, being that I, I sat on the selection board last year. And again, you know, it, it could change from year to year. But but those are the tools um, that we use we use as selection boards. I appreciate that, Master Chief. Hey, and if I can uh, chime in, um, you know, this is uh, Master Chief Juarez um, with the new construct of the NRMTC. Um, we are going to be, I mean, you know, the writing's on the wall. We are going to be looking for more operational billets, and and you know, Master Chief Washington's right. You know, when we're talking about getting into these jobs that. Um, like behavioral health and, and, and stuff like that. We see a strong need for those. Um, it's gonna be harder and harder to get into some of these other billets such as respiratory tech and stuff like that. So uh, you really have to understand that the, the Navy is going to, uh, even Navy medicine itself is for shaping um, for the forward, um, the way ahead. Um, so you really have to kind of look at what the you know Navy medicine is going to need here now and in the future. And this is this is not just going to affect enlisted ranks. This is also affecting our officer ranks. And so you're going to see it's going to be harder to be an HCA because we may not need as many HCAs. Um, and so um, you know it, the future is changing for Navy medicine, and and you have to if you want to be a part of it, um, you're going to have to make some moves. Um, and so that's that's really all I wanted to make sure. And I know I know that Master Chief McDevitt is itching to speak on Sub IDC. I want to say, Master Chief, Mc, Master Chief McDevitt, you're more than welcome to. But remember, we do have a a, a Zoom coming up for that. But go ahead. No, <laughs> hey, so that's why I just put. First. Um, so that's why I just put my email address on there. So please feel free. I will give you the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, absolutely. Please, please contact me. So yes, like my chief war said, we actually went to surface IDC school together. Um, so I was a surface IDC. Uh, we graduated in 2007. Um, and then I did two tours as a surface IDC. I, I was on the Theodore Roosevelt for four years. Then I went to Navy Marine Corps Public Health Center. And from there, I did an IA to Kenya. Um, and then I went to sub IDC. Uh, I did a tour on the Michigan and now I'm here at NSSC Kings Bay. Um, so I, I did a boat. I'm at the ISIC. Um, yes, it, please uh, email me any questions you have. Um, you know, you can call me, whatever. I, there's, I have uh, 16 crews down here that I'm responsible for. I can give you 16 different points of view if you would like. Yeah, and we can save it off for tomorrow, uh, Chief McCullough, because I don't want to take up IDC with, with this venue. But yeah, yes, contact me, please, please. I appreciate that, Master Chief, and I'll definitely be tuning in tomorrow for that uh, IDC um, Zoom meeting as well. Okay, I just and wanna, if, you, um, um, if you go to the chat uh, window on here, I put my email on there. I, I wrote it down. I appreciate that. Okay. Hey, um... HM2, this is Chief Maddox, man. I'm at the sub IDC schoolhouse. I got one question for you. What's stopping you? What's stopping me? Nothing. What's I'm... stopping you? The, the okay. Thing... Be, I... be, be, be at the Zoom tomorrow, and we're going we gonna to see what's good. <laughs> all right, That's all I, I got to say. <laughs> all right. Good, good question and good answers. While we're waiting on the next question, uh, there was a chat uh, question and answer. Uh, HM1 Stanway put, I just want to say that it's truly awesome to know that you guys are uh, looking at the best candidate for orders. The stigma I've seen with a lot of sailors is that detailers just put in hot field areas, more of a numbers game. I like that we have an even bigger voice in the process to let us fight for orders. And seeing Chief Jordan, the, the, the previous detailer spoke on that, typically a sailor will get hot field orders because mm -hmm. they don't understand the NAV admin about the detailer process. So seeing Chief Jordan, you just gave me an idea. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach out to you and other HM detailers. Yeah. And we're going to have a Zoom session with detailers by itself. And, and we're going to do some question and answers, if that's okay with you in the future. Um, yes, that's fine. But like I said, just remember, you know, some of the, some of the NAV admins, they will always update, update, and update. But from my detailer experience, 
typically the sailors, they don't understand the NAB admin, right? And to be honest with you, if you're not actually, sorry, they don't understand the NAB admin. And so what typically happens is that the sailor will go into um, BB or they'll go into my Navy assignments and they'll make their selections and things like that. And you'll be surprised at what they typically pick. You'll be surprised at how many sailors don't truly believe that um, the entire country, the entire world is an area where you can go. And a lot of the times sailors tend to, um, they kind of narrow down their, their selections. So as a detailer, if you're a sailor and the only, only thing you want to do is stay in San Diego and only options you're giving me is I want to go to Fleet Surgical Team this or I want to go to Naval Hospital this and everything resides in San Diego and I cannot get you to that location, then where do you think I'm going to possibly send you if I can't get you to the locations? Now, typically detailers will reach out and have that conversation with those sailors. But a lot of the signs is you cannot sell yourself short by trying to get to one specific location. I've always told sailors, if you want to go operational, you got to think about all the different mm -hmm. locations. What is most important? Is it the location or is it the billet? I tell sailors, the billet should be the most important regardless of the location. If you want to go with the Marines, I want to go with the Marines and I want to go with the Marines anywhere. Okay, that is going to open up a detail is options for you to help you get to that billet because the billet is what makes the story. It's not the actual location. And that's just something that we need to preach to our service. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I just want to uh, uh, put a shameless uh, placement alumni plug out. You know, on that call, I think it's important to um, have the placement coordinators and, and draw the full enlisted distribution picture. Um, and, you know, placement is a big one. I, it's funny because I, I used to say uh, when I was up there that detailers were just the figureheads and detailers uh, would take all the heat, but you know, it was Ray Jordan or uh, Rob, Rob or whoever it was in a detailer shop coming over and saying, hey, uh, uh, Master Chief, I, I, or Senior Chief at the time, I need this billet, this sailor wants to go here. And I'm like, bro, I can't, that's not the priority. Um, that that that, that wasn't the priority for MCAB or MCAF or whoever, I need this billet filled. Then the detailer got to go back and figure out how to, try, how to fill this billet to get that billet. So I think it's important, you know, um, manning and enlisted distribution is like Greek to even chiefs. Um, so I know it's a little tough uh, for sailors, but it's important to, to, to get the whole picture of how the process works and I, you know, I always defend the detailers because most of the time it's the man and control authorities or the placement coordinator saying, nope, you can't have that billet um, because this is not the priority for whoever. And there's so many competing, uh, 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 competing uh, interests in a, a certain billet. So you have your quality of life. You know, I want to do high school DGM. Um, you have readiness. This ship needs to be fit, uh, filled. And more than anything, um, that dollar dollar bill um, will will get in the way uh, of getting that billet. So I, I think it's really important when we when we talk detailers, you know, to draw the full distribution pictures. Now, the, the most time sailors aren't aren't interested in the, the placement side or the or the ECM side um, or the uh, uh, rating evaluator side, um, but all of that plays into how to get. Sailor X to bill it Y. Um, it, it's a big deal. Absolutely. Thank you, Master Chief, for that. And, and you're absolutely right. Uh, whenever we put this together, we'll make sure that we have that, that 360 degree, that full circle on board, and we can try to break it down uh, to them so they can understand, because you're right, that is very important. Thank you so much for that, Master Chief. Uh, any sailors out there that have uh, more questions, the floor is yours. And if not, we're gonna, I'm going to get ready to close this out. While I'm, while I'm talking, if you're a sailor that have a question, please write it in the chat or you're more than welcome to come off mute and I will stop. But um, because it's getting ready to, I think we're hitting about an hour and 30 minutes, which is awesome. I try to do these in an hour, but this one definitely needed an hour and 30 minutes. This was great. Um, 
let me say before we close out, first and foremost, again, uh, a big thanks to everybody that showed up tonight. Um, you took time out of your schedules to give back information to these sailors. And I, and I, I know that these sailors are going to feed off this. And uh, this, this is a recorded video, so they'll be able to watch this at a later point. But before we close out, what I would like to do is I'm just going to go down the list one last time with my presenters. And if you have any uh, last words of advice in regards to what we talked about tonight, you're more than welcome to give it. And then once we're done with that, uh, we will close out this Zoom and uh, we will go about our, our, our merry way. So uh, let me go back to Senior Chief Peterson. Since you opened it up, I'll let you be the first to, to give your last closing comments. All right. Hey, I appreciate that. And I see Senior Parra's uh, face now on video too. So um, I'll, uh, I'll say a last few remarks from First Marine Division. And then uh, just as uh, Senior Chief Parra and I have been passing the torch back and forth between First Marine Division and Special Purpose MAGTAF, I'll turn it back over to him because he's currently sitting in the seat if he has anything else to, to add. So first, uh, a, a Senior Chief Freeland, I appreciate uh, you bringing that up about uh, the resume and just showing that the sailor took interest and cares because uh, I was back in there and you just reminded me to update my uh, update my resume on something. So I appreciate that because that that care factor right there out of the gate and Senior Chief Parra can attest to this. We had 15 people applying for one E6 billet and only three of them put in their resume and their resumes were not very uh, good at all. They were not appetizing. And I will tell you that we did not select uh, those sailors. Um, so please take the time, I can't stress it enough, to take care of yourself and take care of your career. Um, diversity, seashore rotation, yes, but a, if you were just at First Marine Division and you went down the street to Pendleton or to Balboa, and now you're trying to come back to First Marine Division, odds are we're not selecting you. We're not gonna put you in our top five. We want diversity within First Marine Division. We want diversity within our chief's mess. Now we know we don't have the end all be all say to that, um, and there's some EFMP, there's stuff, family dynamics that come into play, and we understand that. But I will tell you that we want diversity, like um, I think it was Chief, uh, Senior Chief Gordon hit on before. Go from East Coast to West Coast, overseas to Florida. We want you bouncing around. We want that diversity. We don't want a bunch of I-5 sailors hanging out in Southern California at First Marine Division. Um, and then the last thing, somebody mentioned about quals and NECs not being in your record. Hey, take a deep dive into your uh, sailor history. Take a deep dive into your resume. Your warfare should be right on the front of that resume. Um, if they're not there, go do your due diligence to get it properly put into your record because maybe it is in there. We just can't see it on there and figure that out um, because, you know, the other day it took me about seven minutes. I'm like, how's this guy at EP? He left First Marine Division, went to a MEPS, but now he's coming back to First Marine Division, wants to, but he doesn't have his FMF. This don't make no sense. How do you leave with an EP? And then uh, we kept on digging and we finally found his FMF pin. So make sure your record's correct. It reflects on the screens. If not, reach out to MNCC, uh, uh, to the uh, 188 Help Desk at MPC, and I'm sure they can uh, help you out. Hey, that's all I have from here. Uh, Chief McCauley, I really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity, and thanks for having this, and I'll turn it over to Senior Chief Parra real quick. Hey, Russ, Senior Peterson, uh, thanks so much. I know he's uh, uh, calling us from uh, the Middle East, so uh, I hope the weather is not as hot. It was 95 or so here in uh, Camp Pendleton, California. Uh, but uh, I've seen uh, what your slaves are doing, 7360 is uh, a success. Uh, uh, cannot say um, good enough things about how the chiefs, the first classes, and the rest of the sailors uh, make us leaders look good. Because if anyone, especially in this chat, if you listen, if you've heard Senior Chief Peterson uh, talk, and you have questions such as, Senior Chief Peterson, how do you measure your success? And I'm sh sure that with full confidence, Senior Chief Peterson's response would be, my success, it is, and it was measured because of the successes, successes of those sailors, our sailors. So it is owed to them. We owe you, as our sailors, we owe it to you. It's not about us anymore. It's about you to ensure we push you to the limit, uh, number one, but however, I would like to leave you by, uh, with this. There are three letter C's in life, Charlie, right? Three letter C's, choice, chance, and change. The tools are on the table for each and every one of, uh, of us. These tools do not discriminate. 
not even by rank or pay grade. So you have to make a choice for yourself in order to take that chance. And the uh, rewards of that chance, you will see the changes in your life. And that's what I would like to leave you with. And thanks for everything you do. Thanks uh, for your service and, uh, and the leaders out there for making the time uh, and Chief McCauley just to put in this together because this is the epitome of laying the kill in continuing the conversation. So I appreciate your leadership and spearheading this movement. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was great. Uh, Senior Chief Don Guinness, any last comments? Yeah, so I um, wanted to want to appreciate uh, uh, the invite, uh, Chief McCauley, and uh, a lot of presenters did a lot of uh, good information out there. So I'm going to leave you guys uh, all uh, this uh, thing. So continue, continue to continue to profess yourself. Do not stop. Do not stop. Take opportunity on what the Navy gave you. Okay, U.S. map certifications, okay, opportunity for training, collateral duty, um, Navy school. So take that with you because it will boils down into one competitive sailor. And that's what, we, that's what we look for. Okay, so have a nice night to all. Um, I'll be standing by here for a while. But um, if you have any questions, concerns, uh, shoot me an email or whatever. Um, I'll be here. Thanks again. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. San Chief Freeland, any closing remarks? Uh, as I say, uh, thank you for obviously letting me be part of this. Uh, I, I believe a monumental thing because this impacts sailors' careers and their choice of duty station so much. Um, the only thing I want to reiterate is check your resume. To me, it's like your LES. Check it every month or so. Just make sure nothing's popped up or everything's in there because I seen Chief Pearson said, like, you could have had a warfare device or even a recall and it's not showing up in your record, and that could, like, push you out of that top five. So at the end of the day, it's, it's your resume. We're, we we want to help you build it, but it's your resume, and you have to have that ownership and that onus of it to bank yourself, you know, again, it's all marketability. You're selling yourself as a product. We want to buy it, but we want to buy whatever's, you know, best for our command and the interest of the command. So the better you make yourself look, the better chance you have of getting those, you know, duty station, those orders you want, but make sure your record's up to date. And then, if you don't know how to do it, ask, ask, ask. Like MNCC, your CPPA, your leadership, but always make sure your record reflects I mean, properly. And then closing comments on the resume for those things that didn't make your eval that you were upset about, maybe put them in the bottom. Everything, you know, again, you're adding, you're fine tuning your resume, add everything in the bottom. So that way you have every, all the facts are on the table. Could have been on shore duty, but you have experience on the ship, something. Um, but that's literally what I have is marketability. That's all I have. And thank you again. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Senior Chief. Uh, and Chief Jarrell, any closing remarks? Uh, no, I just echo what everyone else said, and I uh, thank you for this opportunity for uh, letting me come on and speak with you guys. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much, too, Chief. Uh, HM1 Raquel, any closing remarks? I think everybody's pretty much hit it, Chief, but thank you. Awesome. And thank you for what you do down there at NSW. Good luck on your, on your results coming up. Um, and CMC Warris, any closing remarks? Or did he, I think he might've exited. I think he, I think he had to leave. Okay. Uh, Master Chief McDevitt, any closing remarks? Uh, I don't, um, I'm, uh, take my email, give me a call. Um, always here. I, this is so awesome. I'm really uh, thankful that you put this together. Like I said, I did learn um, and I hope to hear everybody's voice again tomorrow afternoon. Awesome. Awesome. I can't lie. I'm actually very excited about the uh, IDC Zoom session tomorrow too. That is going to be epic. But uh, as far as tonight, again, thank you all for being on board with this. Um, I mean, you, 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 if, you, if you guys can see the, oh, I'm sorry, Master Chief Washington, I'm sorry. Master Chief Washington, any closing remarks? Hey, I, I'm going to bow and let, let Senior Jordan slide in there. Is he still on? Oh, uh, so I, I saw that HM1 Stanway had a, another question about uh, dropping NECs. If we want to go ahead and answer that or we can go offline. Sure. You, you see can, his question in the chat? Yes, yes, if, if, if you would like to answer, you can answer that. Okay, so uh, let, me, let me take a look at the question again. 
It says, does dropping your NEC help you more than hurt you while you're in your orders window? Uh, so you, you won't be able to drop your NEC while you're in your window. Um, because again, the way a listed distribution um, comes, when you get in that, that at that 12 month mark, you're already counted as a roller in your current NEC. Uh, so dropping your NEC, you have to do it um, before you're actually deep into your nego negotiation window so you can get distributed in the, uh, the new NEC. But when you talk about dropping the NEC, you have to look at the NEC health um, and, and, and see where you are with that. Um, uh, oftentimes, our sailors who want to drop these NECs have a better chance of going to C in their NEC um, than a quad zero. Uh, so it's all about timing. It's all about the health of the NEC. And I will tell you that the ECM health is not the best uh, gauge of when you should drop your NEC because the rating evaluators, that another piece of the enlisted distribution triangle, the rating evaluators are tracking those NEC health real time. So when I think about the ECMs, I think about them 50,000 foot level, um, they're, they're talking about five years out. And the one thing that the ECMs track is everybody. So it doesn't matter if you're um, limb due, it doesn't matter if you're pregnant, it doesn't matter if you're in prison, um, it hit the, in the brig, it doesn't matter what's going on. In the ECM inventory, it's everyone. Um, the rating evaluator slide, and I, I don't know if they're still doing them, but um, the rating evaluation rate is PERS 4013. They're the ones that'll give you a true snapshot of, of how healthy your NEC is. So a lot of times uh, NEC could be extremely healthy at shore, but undermanned at sea. So if you're trying to get to sea, um, it, it might be better to stay in your NEC. So I say that to say that all of that is, is real time what's going on. Do not wait until you're in your negotiation window. Do it close so that you can get out of the inventory at your current command and get distributed to your next command in the next NEC. Um, so it's, it's all case by case in real time. I know if we, we've seen, you know, pharmacy tech, you know, I fleet temp such and such and he dropped his NEC yesterday. I put in my request today and, and now I can't get mine. It's really that uh, track that closely uh, in real time for for the NEC help, because it might be you're the only one roller and there's one job. So uh, uh, the ECMs, are, are, who's the ultimate authority on that, won't let you out of that NEC at, at the time. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, I really, really appreciate um, being able to come um, on, online. Um, I, I appreciate everything everyone um, uh, does. You know, you know stay, stay sharp uh, to, you know, the junior shipmates on the line. Um, and to the, the new, newly minted Super Chiefs, um, congratulations. Uh, and, and remember uh, that you're those, those technical experts and now we, we need you to pull Chiefs and, and push Master Chiefs. Too easy. Awesome, awesome. Hey, H1 Stanway, if you can, we'll talk offline. I want to get everybody out of here because I know they want to get to their families. And I know uh, CNG Peterson has so much to do in Kuwait on this Friday coming up. I know he's tired, it's early. <laughs> So I want to I go ahead and close this out. Again, I want to say thank you uh, to all of you for showing up. There will be more in the future. I will reach out to you. I'll call, you all, I'll call all of you my HM Avengers. We're here to avenge our rape. So thank you so much, brothers and sisters, Chiefs, CN Chiefs, and Master Chiefs for coming on board tonight. Everybody stay safe, stay blessed, and this is it. Have a good evening. And I always got to remember how to get this thing cut off because I'm the worst at this. Congrats, man. I appreciate this. But how do you? Oh, it's all right. Finger still recording. Okay, we're out. <laughs> <laughs>